Welcome to the worst nightmare of a gun grabber and the politicians on the left side of the aisle and even on the right. Politicians like, oh I don't know, Bloomberg, Obama, and all those people. Welcome to their worst nightmare. Yes, this is Mr. Second Amendment throwing in my EDC video and uh, seems like nowadays everyone has one and it's about time I jumped on it starting the video on a political note because if you're not paying attention right now your rights are in serious danger and uh, I don't want to be a, a fear-mongering conservative right-wing gun-toting Bible reading person here and I'm really not for those who really know me um, but what I am is what we in the concealed carry community call a sheepdog, and I am concerned and ever vigilant about our rights. One of which, in many states, is the right to carry concealed. And EDC, for those who don't know, stands for Everyday Carry. This is the EDC kit video. This shows basically uh, what I carry every day and I'm just gonna go through it I don't want to make this a million hour video I just want to get to the point here and uh, just kind of describe why I carry what I carry so to start with I just want to roll right into it uh, let's start with the main attraction this is a Springfield mil spec 1911 a1 it has been heavily modified and I'm gonna throw up my links right now you should see them Part 1 and 2, if you really want details as to what has been done to the gun, why this is different, why I carry it, whatnot. All that I've already done in a two-part video series, so I'm not going to spend too much air time on it in this video. Now, you're going to say, Mr. Second Amendment, holy crap, it's a 5-inch barrel, it's a government size, full steel 1911. You carry that every day? And the answer is yes, I do. Now, I will admit, if you were to take a poll or a national poll of concealed carry permit holders and you were to ask them what handgun do you carry? A 5 inch barreled full steel 1911 is not going to be on the top of that list. I carry it because it's my preference, I can get good results with it, and I'm used to carrying equipment and whatnot around so it is not, the weight issue is not a problem to me. To go with, um, the standard loadout, if you are going to be one of those crazy people carrying a 1911, when there's so many better modern options out there I guess would be the argument. If you're going to be one of those 1911 people, such as me, the standard loadout is three magazines. And I have it carried in this Black Hawk um, pistol mag. There is a, a, a flap here with Velcro that can cover it up. But I choose to carry it just like such. I've done my practicing like that. I can actually get them out quickly. It retains itself even if I were to somehow you know, go upside down. These mags just don't want to come out until I want them to. They just slip right out. And of course I've got them uh, oriented the same way as you should. In this case, the way I prefer it is with the lips that way, the copper on this side, and I grab it, of course, with the index finger, um, something very much like that, and I insert it, and uh, something I'm not going to cover too much in this video, what will be the subject of future videos, is muscle memory and all that stuff. But anyway, that is my loadout ammunition choice, and of course I've got my 7 plus 1, 1 in the chamber, 7 in the mag, my ammunition choice, as described in the mil spec video, is a Hornady FPD Tap 230 grain plus P ammo. That is some nasty but reliable, consistent stuff. Enjoy it, Hornady. Big double thumbs up. And again, I don't get paid by any. There's no manufacturers here that pay me anything or slip me a couple bucks if I give thumbs up on their products. I just, you know what, guys? Much like guys that do other gun channels, I just review what's out there, and if it works, big thumbs up. If it sucks, I'm going to call it out. You've seen my other videos. I've called some other things out. Moving on, um, I have my phone. This happens to be a smartphone. Not only do I have GPS directioning on it, I've got the ability to take photographs with it. Um, something I don't, people don't think about is, you know, I do have a screen lock and it requires that screen lock knowledge to be able to open it up so you know for you open carriers or concealed carry people or if you ever get pulled over there's ever an incident with law enforcement or anything going on I do have a voice recorder app and I'm not the biggest technology person in the world but I do know how to get my way around a smartphone highly recommended for anybody who's going to carry a gun legally in public and of course this has a little mileage on it 
as you can see and um, basically I can at any time if something is about to go down or I know that something's going to happen or any time I open carry which is few and far between and very rare um, only in states that allow it and, and honestly I don't prefer open carry other reasons for that but if I ever have a situation or anything happens I turn on my voice recorder get it recording I lock the screen so that nobody can tamper or interfere with that it'll always be recording until the battery dies and uh, that's just kind of a, an idea or a mindset to think about protecting ourselves on all fronts keychain standard keys all my important things vehicle truck all that stuff and my paracord keychain that I made uh, I don't I don't really believe in wearing paracord if you didn't make it yourself but that's kind of a a little comment there, a little mindset. But uh, you know, I've actually you've never had to use this particular one, but I've had many, and you'll see in my paracord bracelet here, um, has my tag and everything, and I made this again myself. I have had to take apart my bracelet a couple times. 550 cord is great. Uh, combined with keychain and bracelet, we're looking at about, it's about 10 feet worth of cord, which if you guys know 550 cord, many of you do, that is a very, um, great thing to have it can be used for many things going to my watch this is a traditional face clock and they're gonna you guys are gonna say mr second amendment uh how about the digital age how about you leap into that why do you still have an old pocket watch looking thing and uh for the boy scouts out there who know how to do it you can actually and i do go hiking back in utah when i'm with family uh, up in the u.n is why not sometimes i'll go by myself and it does help for you boy scouts out there with a average face clock if you know how to do it with the sun and perfect timing and whatnot, you can actually orient yourself if you are completely disoriented to north, south, east, west uh, with the shadow and whatnot. I'm not going to get into how to do that here, but that's why I have it. Plus, it's this heavy duty strap. I could use that strap for other things if I had to. And the, the watch basically just slips right out of it, so it's not attached permanently to it. So, that is the perfect preference as to my watch. Of course, this has nothing really to do with EDC. This just happens to be the keys for my work. Carry them every day. Big loop carabiner that can hook onto a belt loop or belt. Another thing most people want to think about is, okay, here's my calendar. Um, keep my personal events and everything in there. And also, this is a um, great notebook to have. This is right in the rain. And uh, everybody in the military should know what that is. But with civilians, this is with, with a pencil, grease pencil, even a pen, ballpoint pen. Um, you can record what you want in here and it's not going to fade away and um, this is just great to have if something's going down if I have an unruly customer or you know things are starting to get a little serious on the gun range which they've been known to happen um, I have a notebook with a pen on me and uh, just to collect my thoughts and basically write down any quick observations right after the event so they don't get lost in my frantic crazy memory at the moment, I am using a Black Hawk size 3 and Black Hawk. Um, I don't understand your sizing system at all. I've tried to understand it. I don't. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. But a size 3, and on the box it says 4.5, 5-inch full-size autos. They're basically talking about 1911s. And this is going to be one of those cases where I don't have a product bias. I am about to rip Black Hawk. Um, this is not good for reholstering. I can get the gun out quickly, but putting it back in is not the easiest affair, and it should be. That is part of a good holster. The reason why I use this is very discreet. For a 5-inch government size 1911, it hides very nicely. And uh, I'm going to throw up a link to my 1911 weekly session video. Boom, should be right there if you want to see kind of how that works and how this whole gear loadout works. By the way, that was a Blackhawk mag holster. I know I said it, but it has a very tough strap that will stay on my body no matter what, which is the whole point. Uh, this is inside the pant line, which I never used to carry like that, but given what I do, um, it definitely helps to carry that. Right about the 4 to 5 o'clock position on the belt line is where I carry it. it just seems to work for me. Tough, hard wallet here got everything that goes with um, got the military ID I've got the concealed carry the driver's license both concealed carry permits all that stuff so that is nice to have um, moving on I think you should have multiple sources of light one of which this just happens to be energizer a little cheapy pen light LED it's extremely bright this actually I was surprised I bought this uh, just to kind of have something that was out of the way but I still wanted a light source it's so easy to pull this out of the belt line and just light up anything with detail. 
So that is one light source. Turns out this is very valuable to have signaling, lighting up something at night. I don't work in the best, most well lit area, so it is nice to have that. Sometimes when the sun goes down, I gotta work on stuff. Also, this is your traditional classic American Zippo. And um, does, much like, actually, this is kind of cool, much like the design of the 1911, virtually almost unchanged, uh, more so in the Zippo than the 1911, but virtually unchanged for decades. In this case, 101 years now. And in this case, I mean, dating back almost a full century. And uh, the reason why I do the Zippo, it's kind of polished metal. I can signal with it if I had to, if I'm out hiking. Um, also, it has fuel. It'll take anything. You can tie this to a, you can take out, um, for those of you who are not familiar with a Zippo, you'd basically remove that unit, and this cloth cotton portion in here absorbs all your flammable liquid, which I say flammable liquid, not fuel, because it'll take anything that's flammable. And uh, that's kind of the beauty of it. You can tie this part to a string and dump it in a gas tank and pull it out instantly recharged and uh, even if your fuel runs out you still have flint so a good per a person that has a little bit of training or skill can start a fire just with the flash just with the, the uh, sparks there so um, generally I kind of when I hike especially I have the mindset I don't care anything unless it has you know three or more uses and for this I can come up with at least three Chapstick, sort of a, a creature comfort, but I have had to use this on extended uh, trips where maybe I started to notice a little bit of rust starting to build up over a couple days on a gun out hiking and uh, just kind of take that off and smear it all over the gun um, wherever we're having some rust issues to kind of do preventative maintenance. So that is one thing. In normal everyday life, I don't expect to use it for that purpose. I got my oils at home and whatnot, but if I'm out hiking or something, not only is that a creature comfort, but it is also just great rust prevention in a dire situation. Of course, this is the ultimate creature comfort, just a pack of gum. Gotta have it. Now I'm gonna roll in a pretty cool photo. This is me and Tom, it should be up here now. Tom is from the Lithuanian uh, Military Academy, really cool dude. But the reason why I'm rolling in this photo is because that is my mini Griptilian from Benchmade. And uh, as you can see on it, you're going to look at all that wear. The holy crap, Mr. Second Amendment. This knife has been w with me forever. This is 154CM stainless steel. Uh, huge fan of Benchmade. I've had to send it back twice. First time was a fluke. Second time was life sharp, so they could resharpen it factory sharp. Um, that blade is just wicked sharp. And you can see, you're going to say, Mr. Second Amendment, what is up with your blade? I know I'm going to have. I know you're watching right now. I know there's going to be some blade haters out there. All right, yes, Mr. Second Amendment prefers the Tanto, and yes, Mr. Second Amendment prefers some serrated portion on his blade. Okay, I am a working man. All right, I'm not, I don't have time for a nice, classic, hunting-style, curved, Bowie-style profile knife. Okay, sometimes I got to cut through cord or some nasty stuff. I want to use that on my serrated portion. Maybe sometimes I want to save my blade for a more delicate thing. And the reason for the Tanto, uh, even though they say it's a fighting knife, um, I don't carry knives for fighting. I really don't. It's a utility purpose. That's what I say to the cops when I get pulled over. And that is, honest to God, that's really, I don't carry knives to defend myself. I carry, of course, this. And more, more importantly, I carry that brain between my two ears. To protect myself, try to avoid situations, but I don't carry a knife for defense. The reason why I like that Tanto is because of that tip. I can, holding it right here when I'm cutting something, I can exaggerate my cuts with very minimal pressure and all of a sudden it does a hell of a cutting job, especially with a sharp blade, which it should always be. Great little knife, not a huge fan of a huge honking knife uh, for everyday carry, although you know, I don't want to be too much of a hypocrite. I do have, of course, my K-Bar, which is also the mini size. I don't like the full-size K-Bar. And I've got my Elk Ridge Bowie, my little cheap truck knife, um, which is kind of cool. $11 for stainless steel. And uh, it gets the job done. But this is my K-Bar, the mini one. And, of course, serrated portion. And uh, this was sharpened by a buddy of mine. It looks a little disastrous, but it is very, very sharp. For, especially for a blade that size. Typically you can't really get a blade like that too sharp compared to something thin or a scalpel or something, but it is wicked sharp. Anyway, I don't want to harp on the knife situation too long. And I got my Leatherman Sidekick. I'm always surrounded by tools at the workplace. I've always got tools in my truck, at my job. I got tools everywhere. 
Um, so I'm not worried about being one of those guys that has like a huge multi-tool that has like a, a million tools in it. Um, I just need the basics. Really the only reason why I have it is for two reasons. One, I got pliers, of course, with the, the spring resistance there. That is a valuable feature to have. Um, and the second reason why is kind of with my theme of having two light sources, I have a theme of having two blades. Now for all the haters out there, guess what? Just made you happy. No serrated, no tanto. Okay, here's your more traditional style knife. Of course, this is very sharp, very impressed by the, bed, or the uh, Leatherman product. You got a Gerber knife, you got a SOG, multi-tool, all that stuff. Great products as well. Had nothing but success with those. Right now, happens to be a Leatherman sidekick. Pretty low profile, fits right in the belt line. Awesome stuff. And you've probably been wondering this whole video, what is up, Mr. Second Amendment, with the boots? What's going on with the boots? Well, I brought out two sets of boots. I wear them kind of 50-50, depends on the day. Here's my standard. These are some uh, Corcoran uh, Marauder boots I bought a long time ago. Okay, got my tag in them, everything like that. They have seen quite a bit of mileage. And buy from Soul, by the way, if you're watching. I know that's kind of nasty right there, but if you're watching, your soles are just, they last. Okay, I like the comfort, I like the profile, these things are wicked sick. But why, why, Mr. Second Amendment, do you have boots? Why do you have shoes on your EDC kit? You don't carry that. Well, this, uh, I wanted to bring those in here because of the fact that you should always be wearing footwear that is conducive to running. Okay, don't be that bro basket that's walking around with sandals with you know long hair all over your face so your vision is obstructed and don't be that bro basket that slips a little Smith and Wesson 380 bodyguard in his in his board shorts little mini pocket okay wearing sandals what happens if you gotta run alright if you need to run to or away from something you don't want to be wearing sandals or nothing at all okay you always want to be wearing footwear that is conducive to running or being on the move such as a boot like this and this is an added benefit here these are patrol gear or uh, response gear it was just something I found a big five really cheap but it actually turned out to be really good quality for the money 40 bucks people has a zip up on the side and uh, the reason why I brought these out and I wear these kind of 50 50s if it's a really muddy day I'll wear these so I can unzip these leave them at the door when I come in but I could have some advantage if you need to take these off for whatever reason really quickly so footwear should be part of your EDC. Like I said, you don't want to be that guy who's running around and uh, you know he's not prepared to be on the move to or from something. And of course I include the belt and uh, that may be a little more obvious than the shoe wear situation. But with the belt, um, basically this is a heavy duty riggers belt. They make better versions of this with uh, the lock and all that stuff. This is just your base entry version. Thank you, Uncle Sam, for this beautiful belt. It's been with me for five, six years, five years now, something like that. And uh, basically, this thing is indestructible. I've towed things. I've towed out a little tiny Jeep with this thing, with my truck. I've done some crazy stuff with this. It stays. It doesn't slack. It doesn't you know, slip or get loose during the day. When you lock it tight at the beginning of the day, it stays there until you go home and take it off. And, uh, you know, I have, going back to my 1911, my handgun of choice right now, okay, this is a heavy gun. It's got some heavy ammo, and as you can see, besides the boots, I'm carrying all of this stuff on my belt line or in my pockets. Okay, so I'm going to need something really sturdy and wide, too, that takes up the full profile of the belt loops, whatever pants I'm wearing. And, uh, you know, you're going to want something that can hold all of this weight up, especially for me in my situation with how much weight is actually going to be on my, on my belt line here. So, um, that's really about it. I'm looking at all my stuff here. It looks like I covered everything. Um, just maybe some ideas or things you weren't maybe really thinking about prior, and that's okay. This is just kind of serving to communicate kind of information, knowledge, uh, skills, or different opinions on how we do our employment. Um, but basically, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. If you got any comments or you want to share some information or, or your thoughts and ideas, would absolutely love to see that in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep this uh, in your liked videos. You can refer to it, send it out to friends if they need help. Hopefully it has been helpful. That's the number one reason why I do it. So uh, <clears throat> thanks again, Mr. Second Amendment, signing off.